from meteorologist Lindsay Anderson. Welcome back everyone. It is 514 and we're continuing with our coverage of Hurricane Ian. It's now a category one. This time yesterday was a tropical storm because it was over land for several hours. Now it's still the center of the storm over the Atlantic Ocean, so it continues to strengthen before it's making a third landfall later this afternoon and the latest track is looking a little different as it might just uh, move north of Charleston, South Carolina sometime this afternoon. This is 1 p.m. on one of our computer models showing that the center of the storm is going to cross shore, crossing inland, and then it looks like that onshore flow. So remember the right side of the hurricane is where the worst impacts are going to be felt as far as storm surge is concerned, um, and that would be for areas near Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So we've got to watch that as there's more of a northerly track of the storm this morning. It's going to weaken moving over north and South Carolinas and then Virginia, but really heavy rain and some strong wind gusts anticipated into the mid Atlantic all weekend long. So this is going to be a story that we'll talk about for several more days, not just a Florida storm, even though they experienced the worst of Ian. Now we've got uh, clear skies here in Kansas City, pretty quiet conditions too to start us off. And with a mostly clear sky outside, our air temperatures have been able to fall and drop um, pretty quickly. In fact, we are in the 40s here on the Missouri side still. 42 Warrensburg and Marshall, 44 Richmond and Lawrence, but still roughly near 50 around the Kansas City metro. So prepare for that refreshing, crisp, kind of cool morning once again, something that we've dealt with all week long. After that, once the sun comes up, temperatures will recover and warm up beautifully. This is about a, as seasonal as average as it gets a high of 75 to 76 degrees anticipated today and maybe slightly warmer to our west. You'll notice maybe some clouds are expected today at times. Unfortunately, no rain. We could use that, but some more scattered clouds are certainly in today's forecast. We're in the 80s on the Kansas side, low 70s on the Missouri side, and still quite cool up towards the Great Lakes today as high pressure continues to dominate the weather to the north and east. After today, we are warming up Saturday and Sunday for your fall activities. It does get a little bit warmer, so we're about 80 degrees each of our days, and then a strong front is going to be moving in by the end of next Next week we go from 80 Tuesday to 70 Thursday and then the 60s a week from today. Lindsay, thank you. The head of FEMA will be on the ground in Florida today surveying the devastation Ian left behind, even as that storm still threatens parts of the East Coast, as Lindsay was just describing. NBC's Bree Jackson is in Washington with the latest on the federal response this morning. A revived Hurricane Ian makes its way north this morning after tearing through parts of Florida and causing catastrophic damage. I literally watched my house disappear with everything in it mm -hmm. right before my eyes. Officials are assessing the aftermath, estimating 250,000 Floridians were displaced. At least a dozen have died. That number only expected to rise in the coming days. This could be the deadliest hurricane in Florida's history. President Biden pledging full federal support for Florida during his visit to FEMA headquarters, approving a major disaster declaration that includes funding for temporary housing and home repairs. Mr. Biden also vowing to work closely with Governor Ron DeSantis on what's expected to be a long road to recovery. However long it takes, we're going to be there. That's my commitment to you. As Floridians take stock of the damage, Hurricane Ian is now on track to make a second U.S. landfall, bringing damaging winds and torrential rain to South Carolina. But we know there's going to be more, uh, not more, in Charleston. Georgia and North Carolina are also bracing for fierce impacts. So for North Carolinians, I want to be clear. This storm can still be dangerous and even deadly. President Biden urging those in impacted areas to heed the warnings from emergency officials, stressing the dangers of Hurricane Ian will continue throughout the weekend. In Washington, Bree Jackson for NBC News. And of course, NBC News has full team coverage from Fort Myers and Charleston, South Carolina, where Ian is projected to hit. You heard Lindsay mention Myrtle Beach a few moments ago as well. That coverage starts at 7 on the Today Show, but we'll of course have further updates here on KSHB 41 throughout our newscast all morning long. Meanwhile, protests continue in Iran, despite government crackdown and state media reports claiming that demonstrators have put an end to their rallies. 
The protest triggered by the death of 22 year old Masa Amini, who died in a hospital three days after being apprehended by the morality police in Iran and taken to a re-education center for not abiding by the state's hijab rules. Rallies that started with calls for justice for Amini's death have morphed into larger protests, with many calling for the fall of the entire regime in Iran. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken spoke about the Iran protest on Tuesday and said that women in Iran have the right to wear what they want. Masa should be alive today. Uh, the only reason she's not is because a brutal regime took her life and took her life uh, because of uh, decisions she should be making about what she uh, would wear or not wear. Um, women in Iran have the right to wear what they want. They have the right to be free from violence. They have the right to be free from harassment. That's true in Iran. It's true, should be true everywhere. Meanwhile, Hanani and Hussein Ali died from the violence in Iran. The two have grieving family members right here in Kansas City. Tomorrow night for the Global Day of Action, KC will join 120 other international cities by holding a peace rally. That rally will be held at the Mill Creek Fountain in the Plaza at 6 o'clock. Then we'll turn into a candlelight vigil to honor those who have died in Iran, like Hanana and Hussein. The House Committee investigating the January 6th riot is done with one of the last interviews as it prepares for its final report. The wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas spent four hours talking to the committee on Thursday. Chair Betty Thompson says Jenny Thomas is standing by her claim that the 2020 election was a fraud. Her attorney says she told the committee her minimal and mainstream activity focused on ensuring that reports of fraud were investigated. This week's public hearing was canceled because of Hurricane Ian. Google plans to help users check out an area without actually going there even more than they already do. The tech giant plans to launch immersive views, which they're going to call vibes, to let users look at an area around, say, a restaurant or business you would like to go to. It also provides information on how busy a business might be at a certain time and even more than it already does. This new feature was created using artificial intelligence as well as 20 million reviews, photos and videos. That new feature is set to start rolling out in the coming months from Google, so watch for that. Speaking of vibes, it's Friday. That means it's time for another one tank trip and we go to our vibe master in chief for that. For the first time ever, the Kansas City Zoo hosting Glow Wild. Anchor Deja Jones taking us on a one tank trip to check out this family friendly immersive lantern festival. Watch this. A unique experience at the Kansas City Zoo as massive handmade works of art light up the night sky. This is Glow Wild. We're talking about massive works of art made out of steel and silk. They're all handcrafted, beautiful, and obviously glowing. You'll see animals throughout, representatives of some Kansas City icons, Asian cultural creations. So there's a little bit of something for everybody. Come on! We have 500,000 strings of lights, 40 tons of steel, and more than 200,000 yards of silk that it took to make all of them. The lights through it and then cover that all with, with the silk. And then they'll go back in and you'll see it, um, especially like on these lemurs, where they've gone back in and then hand painted some of the details. Another thing that you're gonna see a lot of are botanicals. We have some beautiful floral displays. Are you seeing this? Lots of people remember the big blue whale very fondly, uh -huh. are very nostalgic about it. And so this is a little bit of a nod to the big blue whale oh, that we're able to bring back to the zoo for a limited time only. You were able to walk through the big blue whale before, oh, wow. but it didn't have jellyfish. got plenty of other lit tunnels for selfies and dancing, of course. Some of the lanterns even come to life. Oh my gosh, it's moving! City 
They also have live Chinese acrobatic performances that you can check out. You can also purchase handcrafted art and your very own lantern. Glow Wild is open Tuesday through Sunday from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Tickets range between $20 and $25 for adults, and tickets for kids range between $18 and $23. So go ahead, experience the Kansas City Zoo like never before. What day trips, I love it! I'm Deja Jones, KSHB 41 News. All right, thank you, Deja. We are just weeks away from the season of giving coming up. I'll tell you how you can get an early start on that shopping while supporting your community. Police investigating two separate homicides they say happen around the same time at 533, what we know right now. And of course, we're continuing our coverage of Hurricane Ian as it has become a hurricane once again. Lindsay Anderson tracking that storm coming up at 530. Almost 530 this morning and a live look from Charleston, South Carolina. Hurricane Ian expected to make landfall this afternoon in that state as the storm is regaining strength after devastating, devastating so much of Florida earlier in the week. We keep reminding people this morning, Lindsay Anderson, hurricane we're saying again. This was exactly. a tropical storm this time yesterday and now we're back to hurricane. Winds at 85 miles per hour and still only moving at 10 miles an hour to the northeast. Right. Okay, so it's a very slow moving but still powerful storm. The eye of it is over the Atlantic Ocean, but I wanted to show you these hurricane warnings that now stretch along the entire coastline it's of South of Carolina. Coast. Yeah, and Myrtle Beach may actually see the worst of this as it's on the right side of the storm. Let me show you that track right here. You can see category one status still this morning and will likely stay with those winds at 85 miles per hour when it reaches land between Charleston and Myrtle Beach. Yeah. And again, that right side of the storm, which would be Myrtle Beach, Wilmington, North Carolina, could see some big storm surge from this. And of course, we've already seen how devastating this can be. Let's get to NBC Sam Brock, who's in Naples, Florida. It's quite the contrast to Naples, an area that saw one of the worst storms they have ever seen. Certainly the storm surge broke records as this area right now trying to absorb the psychological and financial damages. But other parts of Florida had it far worse. We are going to look at what's going on right now in Sanibel Island after that causeway collapsed, leaving 6,700 people out there. Now, we don't know how many evacuated. What are officials actually doing right now to save those who are still stranded? And in Fort Myers, nine hospitals there had to evacuate all of their patients because of lack of access to clean drinking water. We're going to talk much more about the dire situations still developing here in Southwest Florida. It's coming up on today. God, just awful to look at there. Again, this is Charleston, South Carolina, where locally many organizations are stepping up to help with relief efforts. Heart to Heart International has a team in Florida right now helping to provide medical care. Local price choppers also collecting donations to help the American Red Cross here in Kansas City. And we have set up a hurricane relief fund through our company's charitable organization. It's the Scripps Howard Fund. We're going to pull up a QR code, so get your phone ready if you're up watching with us this morning and scan this. We have sister stations in Fort Myers and Tampa that are part of our Scripps network. Our journalists there have seen how devastating the storm is. They're going to work with local groups there to make sure every cent you donate goes to people impacted by the storm. So you can scan this code or you can text the word storm to 50155 or just go to KSHB.com. Whatever is easiest for you to donate. We hope you're able to do that as we watch all these images come in. Lindsay Anderson, it's it's hard not to feel awful for how people in Florida are already dealing with and now we're getting ready for another round. So we'll have more of that coming up. Let's talk about locally because we are continuing to be very blessed here in the Kansas City area with good weather. Yeah, grateful to kind of wake up to the clear skies, quiet conditions. There is a, a line of clouds and rain that have developed between Omaha and Wichita. That is not going to get to our area, but just something different to share with you on our satellite and radar composite this morning, aside from the clear skies or vast clear skies from Kansas and Missouri. Your school day planner today may include a little bit more cloud cover at times, but still wonderful. Great afternoon at the end of your school day, mid 70s, and this sets up some really nice conditions for your weekend plans as well. We'll break that down for you next.
Lindsay, thank you. Police investigating what they say is a homicide in KCP and Casey Mo. Officers say they responded to the 4600 block uh, 46th Street around 1030 last night and found an unresponsive man outside a house. They say EMS declared that man dead at the scene. Detectives now looking for evidence and witnesses. Around the same time last night, officers responded to another shooting in the 6100 block of Tracy Avenue. They say they found a man who'd been shot there and EMS took him to the hospital where he died. Police say based on that investigation, they know there was an altercation between the victim and an unknown suspect before shots were fired. So if you know anything about either of those, you can call the tips hotline. Kansas City, Missouri joining a lawsuit against Missouri's Second Amendment Preservation Act. The city joins Jackson County, St. Louis and St. Louis County in challenging the lawsuit that prohibits local law enforcement from working with federal agencies in, in uh, enforcing federal gun laws. The city attorney says it would not come with added outside costs to Kansas City to join this suit. A Blue Springs teenager suing Meta. Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram. We looked at the 98-page suit filed by the Casey law firm Wagstaff and Cartmel. The suit claims that Meta knowingly exploited children to drive corporate profit by, among other points, designing social media platforms that are unhealthily addictive to young people in particular. The filing also claims that Meta gave no warning to parents, as well as committed fraud and used unfair trade and marketing practices. That civil suit demands a jury trial. We will, of course, continue to follow that suit's process. Well, we're just a few weeks away from the holiday season, and the Junior League of Kansas City wants to get you in the spirit with their annual holiday mart. KSHB 41 News reporter Daniela Leone live with us this morning to tell us all about this event where people can get a head start on their Christmas list and a chance to give back to their community. Yeah, that's right, Taylor. Good morning. This is the Holiday Mart for this year. It's the largest nonprofit shopping event here in Kansas City. It gives you a chance to get a head start on that holiday shopping. And like Taylor said, it also is a way for you to give back to your community, like the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Kansas City. They told me their costs have gone up this year because of COVID supply chain issues. So your support will make a difference. Take a listen. So, you know, whatever the price of the pump is, we're paying for that um, to, to get kiddos out. But, you know, you know, at the same time, we're also paying anything that's that's related to supply chain. I mean, we're, we're paying for food and putting on kids, you know, plates every day. And more than 100 local and regional vendors are all under one roof. Joining me right now is Ali Smith. She's the co-chair of Holiday Mart. Ali, you guys actually reduced booth prices this year for these small businesses. What led up to that? Well, we know it's been a really challenging few years for our retailers and local businesses, so we did choose to reduce our booth prices. And we also have a lot of local people who don't have those same travel costs, which is wonderful. How exciting is it for you guys to be able to put up this event and help your community? Oh, it's been a year's worth of work. We're so excited that it's here. It's our 35th anniversary and we can't wait for people to come shop. And it's not only about the shopping, guys. There's a lot of family-friendly activities as well. Joining me right now is Heather Pena. Heather, there's reindeers, entertainers. Tell me all about it. Yes, yeah, so tomorrow we'll be featuring Miller, Miller, Marley, and the Tiny Tainers and Mini Tainers. On Sunday, Santa's reindeer will be making a visit from 10 to 2. And after the show, in early December at our league headquarters, we'll be hosting seeing pics with St. Nick where you can come get your photos with Santa. And speaking of St. Nick, if you attend, you can actually sign up for those pictures, right? Yes, that's right. Come visit us at the Junior League booth 1115. All right, guys, doors open at 9 o'clock. It will be happening all weekend long, so stay tuned. Reporting in Kansas City, Missouri, Daniela Leone, KSHB 41 News. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're less than a month away also from our Gift of Soul Gala, our community effort to provide sneakers for students whose parents can't afford to buy them a new pair. That gala is October the 27th. You can buy tickets right now to by scanning the QR code on your screen right there. There'll be food, drinks, live music, and our live auction, and tickets are limited, so get those purchases done now. You can scan that QR code or visit KSHB.com. Coming up next at 540, the American Royal World Series of Barbecue kicks off today. I love it. What do you need to know about the world's largest barbecue contest coming up? And a quick live look outside over Kansas City this morning. It is a cool start to your day, but we've got another beautiful one on tap. Your full forecast coming up at 545.
tip for you. Do not go near the Kansas Speedway today on an empty stomach. Today is the start of the American Royal World Series of Barbecue. More than 500 competitors from all around the world compete for the title of Grand Champion. Kicks off at three with a pit party that will include, of course, live music, backyard games, plenty of food and drinks. Our Ray Daniel will be there for us coming up on KSHB 41 News at 6 a.m. She got the tough assignment today I being surrounded say. by barbecue. Lindsay, the thing that you and I are holding on to is at least our clothes won't smell like that whenever we're <laughs> done with it, but she will get to eat what we yeah. don't get to eat. It's not the worst thing, though. Right. Home smelling like barbecue. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is this was a great weekend for this event. I can't believe it's this time of year. Your eat outside index today, lunch and dinner. Maybe you're going out to the Kansas Speedway. We'll be running. I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. How about that? Really similar to how yesterday shaped up 70 to 75 degrees during those meal times. It may be a little breezy, so that could knock us back a uh, yeah, index, but you know, 10 out of 10 is pretty great. So your grilling planner looks wonderful too. This evening we're down to 68 by 7 p.m. tonight, Taylor. All right, Lindsay, thank you so much. This hard to tell exactly what we're looking at here, but it's rain on one of the beaches of South Carolina, Folly Beach there because of Hurricane Ian that is moving in this morning. At 549, we're taking a look at the recovery efforts already underway in Florida after the same system blew through. Plus, do you remember the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge back in 2014? At 552, we'll tell you how it helped in the fight against Lou Gehrig's disease. To KSHB 41 News today. Some of the top stories we're following for you on your Friday morning. KCPD investigating two separate homicides they say happened around the same time. The first happened last night around 1030 on 46th Street. Officers say when they responded, they found an unresponsive man and that person died at the scene. Detectives now looking for evidence and witnesses in that case. The second happened in the 6100 block of Tracy Avenue. Police say they found a man who'd been shot there and EMS took him to the hospital. That's where he died. Officers say based on the investigation of that shooting, an altercation between the victim and an unknown suspect happened earlier in the night. Two people out of a home after a house fire this morning as well. KCFD says it happened near Northwest Prairie View Road and Northwest 62nd Street. Firefighters say no one was hurt, but two cats are unaccounted for so far. The cause of that fire is still unclear. Of course, the big national story continues to be Hurricane Ian. We are following its path as it's make, making its way towards South Carolina. Meteorologist Lindsay Anderson checks in with us right now. Lindsay, we know that's going to hit the South Carolina coastline sometime today. What's the timeline you think? Yeah, it'll be this afternoon. I think around lunchtime, Kansas City time. Okay, okay. so noon or 1 p.m. We'll be watching. It is moving very slowly still only at nine miles per hour to the north northeast. The winds within the center of the storm, those max sustained winds are up to 85 miles per hour, so it has strengthened moving over the Atlantic Ocean. It's starting to make that curve westward, and as it does so, it will make landfall somewhere between Charleston and Myrtle Beach. That's the newest update, the newest track that's come out from the National Hurricane Center. So let's go through this. You can see our computer model brings the storm, at least the heart of the storm, just to the northeast of Charleston. Myrtle Beach is right about in here. Usually the right side of the hurricane is where the worst part part of storm surges uh, where the high winds are. So that's going to be a big problem for the northeastern coast of South Carolina and possibly into North Carolina. Now the storm moves inland. It will weaken as it does so, but still bringing tropical storm force winds even into the interior part of North Carolina. Some heavy rain through Virginia. So flooding is going to be a problem into the weekend for those in the mid Atlantic. Something to keep in mind if you've got travel plans out east. If you're staying close to home, no problems here. I mean, it's just a completely different story. Definitely grateful to wake up to such clear and quiet conditions in Kansas City right now. 50 degrees is our current temperature. These numbers have kind of fluctuated a little bit from the 40s and 50s overnight, so I would say it's pretty cool, refreshing, crisp outside where you once again may need that jacket or sweatshirt to kick things off. Downtown and Lee Summit both sitting at 51, 44 Lawrence and Maryville. You're sitting at 44, so that dog walking for Forecast today is going to be beautiful no matter matter the time you can get out. Lunchtime we're still at 69 and then the afternoon high brings us to about 75 or 76 degrees here in the Kansas City Metro. A little bit of a difference today are the cloud cover. I think clouds will start to roll in a little bit more than the previous days this work week. So uh, still mostly sunny, but you may notice that as a big difference. Then if you're going to go apple picking, maybe to um, uh, any fall activities, the pumpkin farms, things like that, this 
this weekend is really shaping up to be quite nice. 78 your high Saturday and 79 on Sunday. So for the most part, many of us are staying below that 80 degree mark. We are going to see an 80 though next week. I have it on Tuesday with an 80 degree high, but after that a strong front is going to be rolling in, dropping temperatures by Thursday and Friday next Friday. So a week from today, our highs are only in the mid 60s and it's going to feel really cool even as we go into next weekend here on our 10 day forecast. You'll notice right off the bat the dry weather is continuing, not a drop or chance of rain showing up and boy, we need it. The drought monitor that came out yesterday has the moderate drought conditions in our region, which I'll show you that coming up a little bit later. Taylor. Lindsay, thank you. This gives you an idea of just how quickly this is going to happen today. We're looking live here at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, which looks relatively calm as we look at the waves, but that storm should make landfall, as Lindsay said, right around lunchtime, our time. The storm has already left an enormous path of destruction across the state of Florida, including.